You know what? <laughs> you know how to scream at me? Sometimes I look at us and I think, Don't dump me while I'm in the dumpster! <laughs> Later. What the hell is that? It's a baby we found in the trash. Well, put it back. It doesn't belong to you. We're not gonna put it back. Well, give it to the cops. Get it out of here. It's bad for business. Somebody who should have protected their future is good old Romney McDaniel. These hyphenated names, man. Tell you what, we're gonna cut right through the hyphen and get right to the Romney. So Romney McDaniel is finally succumbing to the tactics that we have been deploying on her and she is resigning. Now this is too late, okay? She's already done the damage. The RNC has no money. The RNC is trying to take out lines of credit to get them through the 2024 election. So while the rest of us are organizing and are growing and are hustling and grinding to try and save our country from the Marxists, Ronna McRomney has, well, been spending lavishly on herself, buying private flights, limousines, bouquets of flowers and private bars. Ladies and gentlemen, the spending at the RNC has been atrocious. They have spent nothing on actual, actually winning elections. And that's the Romney way, by the way. Ronna McRomney comes from a long line of losers. Her Romney family has effectively run the Republican Party into the ground. They're from Michigan. How's the Republican Party doing in Michigan? What have they done in that state? Flipped it blue is what they've done. Garbage people. Mitt Romney has uh, ran like a parasite to any state that he could possibly think he could ever get elected in. Mitt Romney also ran a completely failing and totally winnable campaign against Barack Obama. Mitt Romney could, if we had a stronger candidate, if Donald Trump had run in 2012, I think we could have saved the country a little bit faster. Mitt Romney instead uh, was the candidate and got his ass kicked by Barack Obama, was absolutely trolled, duped, and destroyed uh, in an election that was unbelievably winnable. And so you have uh, yourself a situation where you have a known loser who's from a known loser family who's now running the RNC directly into the ground. And she's resigning now officially last night, okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, this has come after a very, very long series of events and a structure that was built that I think has very profound consequences on us, our party, uh, and where, where it's headed. I think it's really important to not miss this moment and to take, quite frankly, a victory lap for what is and uh, will be written in the history books as the most effective 100% grassroots campaign to ever scalp an official that, by the way, did not have to succumb to grassroots campaigns. It's really, really important here, ladies and gentlemen, what the time that we are living in. And it's important to sort of crystallize this moment. Rana was never going to resign. We just made it impossible for her to stay. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a tectonic shift in power. See, conservative influencers actually have influence. We can actually determine where our party goes and what our party does. This is kinetic warfare. It's geometric. It's hot. And we are deploying it against the people that are out to destroy our party. And Ronna McDaniel is one of those people. Ronna McRomney is here to ensure that the Republican Party bend to the pithy, weak, limp-wristed country club niceties of liberal suburban white women. Ronna McDaniel went on CNN with her, as soon as she became chair, as soon as Ronna McDaniel became chair, the CNN one, where she starts blathering about white men. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronna McDaniel, at the start of her tenureship as chairwoman, Ronna McDaniel went on CNN and talked about, in the words of the left, how many white men there had been in charge of the RNC. This is going to be a trend, okay? We're going to get to Nikki in just a second. But the trend here is to actually not run successful Democrat campaigns, but instead to integrate yourself parasitically 
uh, into the Republican Party, our establishments and structures, and to usurp us from the inside, which is why we must be victorious in this battle against Rana. Rana, much like Nikki Haley, is a usurper. She is a Trojan horse. She is someone who cozies up to the left, cozies up to left-wing media, uh, grabs hold, slobbers, and like sucks at the teat of corporate leftism, but does so from the high mantles of leadership inside the Republican Party. We are done with that. We have finished that when it comes to people who are allowed, who can run for president. Somebody like that will never win again. We are eviscerating that in the United States House of Representatives. Mitch McConnell is beginning to hear calls for his resignation from inside the Senate. We'll get to that in just a moment. And Ronna McDaniel, who represented that at the head of the RNC, is now done. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the true battle. This is the true war. To within our party root out those who are so weak that they succumb to leftist talking points and to leftist pressure campaigns and to leftist ideology and try to force feed that to us. We reject it. We denounce it. A very special moment here, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Ron McDaniel. As soon as she became chairwoman, running to CNN, this is a trend. I just want to like sort of set the table for what a repulsive person she is. Runs to CNN uh, to talk the Republican Party because there are too many white guys in it. That's right. Check this out. What do these pictures have in common? Hmm, let's hmm, see. I don't know. Yeah, they, there is a there is a familiar theme here. I'm very happy to uh, add a feminine touch to this wall. The Republican National Committee has a new face with a familiar name, Ronna Romney McDaniel. Your uncle ran for president, so did your grandpa. Yeah, and my mom ran for Senate, and my dad had run for attorney general, and I thought, I've got to go get into party politics so I can figure out how to win and get some of my family members across <laughs> the finish. <laughs> it's so freaking pathetic. So everyone in your family's lost, and we love that as Democrats at CNN. And so we love you. And so you're going to continue losing, right? For Republicans, right? And Ronna goes, yeah, blah. pat me on the head. It's so grotesque. By the way, Ronna McDaniel loves going on the corporate media, loves going to the corporate press. And I'm going to tell you an anecdotal story here about something that is really important that you must know. Living in Washington, D.C., I knew tons of people who work at the RNC, small circles of Republicans in D.C. Uh, most people don't want to go there or stay there. I made a huge, this wasn't a mistake because I learned a lot, but like it was bad idea to try and like plant my life there and got the hell out. Okay. Got the hell out. But before I got out, uh, I purchased my first home. Somebody purchased a house down the block. This person worked at the RNC, one of their chief fundraisers. This is a very important anecdotal story. I got to get this up on X. This chief fundraiser for the RNC, this woman uh, invited me over. Come on over. Housewarming. I go over, bring a bottle of, champ you know, bottle of champagne, bottle of wine, whatever. Happy housewarming. In the course of the conversation that night, these two, they had a couple of uh, adult sodas. These two decided to tell me um, hey, you know what is really funny is that we actually never tell anyone we work at the RNC. We're worried about that. We're nervous that people will find out that we're Republicans. So we actually tell people we're Democrats. Tee hee 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 hee. We play like we are work for Democrats from the South. And we're like, that's what we are. And so we don't want we don't want the trouble that comes with telling people in DC that we're Republicans. Tee hee 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 hee. This is the quality of people 
that supposedly represent you in Washington. This is the timber of people who represent you in DC. These people, these are the kind of people who run the Republican party, country club, limp wristed, entitled brats, spoiled weaklings. They dis they are disgusted by you. They're disgusted by us. They're disgusted by our movement. Ron McDaniel is their Lord and savior. Blasphemous. Ron McDaniel represents exactly who they are. Soft, transactional, obsessed, nepotistic, and utterly, utterly human black hole narcissists obsessed about their image, obsessed about what the corporate media says about them, tricked, duped, and reviling of the actual Republican base that puts them in power. You and me, they hate us. They are disgusted by us because we are everything they are not. We are honorable, noble, hardworking, simple, and moral. We are happy and joyful. We have things to live for. And so they despise us. And the left uses that and weaponizes those people against the actual party they're supposed to represent. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Ron McDaniel never wanted to resign. Ron McDaniel would have stayed in this position forever, clinging to her gavel, all right, till we pried it from, metaphorically, her cold, dead hands, as the saying goes. But Ron McDaniel was forced to resign by you and by me. And this is where we actually put meat on this bone, baby, because this proved how powerful we really are. Don't miss this moment. We, as a grassroots movement, were able to engage in kinetic, geometric influence warfare to prove to Rana how unpopular she really was. Now, a lot of this, a lot of the groundwork of this was laid by Charlie Kirk. Tyler Boyer at Turning Point USA. This was continued. This work was continued by Scott Pressler, trolling savagely Ron and McDaniel on social media day after day after day after day. Pull up the uh, Scott Pressler thread. Scott tweeted every single day that Ron did not contact him to help get out the vote for the GOP. Scott tweeted. There are 297 tweets in a row where Ron McDaniel refused to call the number one door knocker in America for Republican causes. And then, ladies and gentlemen, this is how you actually make influence real. You bring that influence into reality. You literally manifest it into reality. And this finally happened when Vivek Ranswamy took the stage after, I will admit, a little bit of uh, coaching by yours truly. We were, it's not coaching. We were just like, talk, we were just, we were just talking, we were just talking shit together. Vivek invited me to film a documentary about his debate performance. I walked in with my coffee. He was sitting there on the couch and he's like, what should I say? It's all in the documentary. And I said, Ron McDaniel is the most unpopular person in the Republican Party. She's holding us back. She is a repulsive troglodyte. And she hates the base. And the base, if you want the base on your side, you should call for Ron McDaniel to resign. She'll be in the room and she'll hear it. And so what happens in the, in the course of all of those, that entire lineage of actual grassroots activism, is that we build upon ourselves. We build upon each other. And all I did was add an accelerant, a like uranium-235 uh, unstable element accelerant to create a viral moment that broke the internet and where Rana was finally able to hear the ringing in her ears of everyone cheering for her to resign. It's easy to block people on social media. It's easy to mute them. It's easy to say they don't exist because their accounts are anons. But when a stadium of people 
cheer for your resignation while you sit in the front row. They piss in your punch bowl. That ringing will stay stuck in your ears forever. It will haunt you. And it will make it untenable for any donor or any politician to come to your rescue. And that is how we defeated Ron McDaniel. That is why we defeated Ron McDaniel. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was the breaking point right here. Swami, let me turn to you. Uh, please make your case. Why would you uh, why should you be the nominee and not the former president? I think there's something deeper going on in the Republican Party here. And I am upset about what happened last night. We've become a party of losers at the end of the day. We a cancer in the Republican establishment. Let's speak the truth. I mean, since Ronna McDaniel took over as chairwoman of the RNC in 2017, we have lost 2018, 2020, 2022. No red wave never came. We got trounced last night in 2023. And I think that we have to have accountability in our party. For that matter, Ron, if you want to come on stage tonight, you want to look the GOP voters in the eye and tell them you resign, I will turn over my, yield my time to you. And frankly, look, the people there are cheering for losing in the Republican Party. Think about who's moderating this debate. This should be Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and Elon Musk. We'd have 10 times the viewership asking questions that GOP primary voters actually care about and bringing more people into our party. You think the Democrats, and we've got Kristen Welker here, you think the Democrats would actually hire Greg Gutfeld to host a Democratic debate? They wouldn't do it. And so the fact of the matter is, I mean, Kristen, I'm going to use this time because this is actually about you and the media and the corrupt media establishment. Ask you the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up disinformation? Answer the question. Go. Mr. Ross. Sorry. This is how we get our country back. We need accountability because this media rigged the 2016 election. They rigged the 2020 election with a Hunter Biden laptop story. Mr. Ramaswamy, and they're going to rig this election. Your time is up. Accountability. Let me turn That's to Governor, Governor Christie. Why? Hot damn. This is how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. This is how it's done. So this is now the conclusion of the most successful grassroots influence operation, kinetic warfare against a fraud, a usurper, a Trojan horse, a cloak and dagger leftist who has through hook and crook taken control of our Republican party. And we just took control back in the greatest revolution that has ever happened in American politics in the modern era, the greatest peaceful revolution in the modern era. No corporations were behind this. No dark, black, grass, you know, uh, astroturfed operation. It was just us using our influence, listening to our audience. How do I know? How am I able to advise Vivek to go after Rana? Because I listen to you and I like you and you listen to me and we, we're, we're together in this. And that's the power of you. And this is the power of happy warriors. You can't defeat an army of happy warriors. And so this is actual influence. And this is an this is a real scalp that you got. And so thank you. If you weren't up in the comment sections, if I wasn't getting the feedback from you about how much you hate Rana McRomney and the entire rotted system, then maybe we wouldn't have gone so hard. But ladies and gentlemen, mark my words, I sat right, I sat in the front of that row during that answer. And Ronna McRomney was right behind me. And I could hear her and mewling and hissing during that answer. She had, was having an apoplectic meltdown. Okay? I could hear it. If we had phones, if they allowed us to use our phones, I would have filmed it but they snap at you if you have your phones up. That stuck. That was the physical manifestation of everything we've done here digitally, all of the bedrock infrastructure engineering that we put in physically to get Rana out. And we won. And it's so special. And so now what do we do? We return the RNC to the people. 
We return the RNC to the Republican voters. We return this country to the people and we remove the rot and decay from our institutions. And Ronna McDaniel, Ronna McRomney represents that perfectly. After being called out, after being called out on stage and humiliated, what does she do? Ronna McRomney runs to her friends, not Republicans, not conservatives, not, not this show, God forbid, but not, not Charlie Kirk's show, Bongino, Shapiro, I don't care, Tucker, whatever. She doesn't, she wouldn't dare go on conservative media like a rat caught in a trap. She tried to scurry rabidly to the only friend she had left. It tells you everything where she ran. This is where she ran. Thank you for being part of that because this is a time where we met the moment. Thank you so much for having us. It was an honor Thank to co-moderate that debate. We Thank really you. appreciate it. Ronna McDaniel, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. She ran to the Russian collusion hoaxers. This rat. She ran to the people that told you Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation. To the people who cheered on Trump's impeachments. She scurried to the comforting glow of the CNN cameras, for instance. Remember, she called CNN. She didn't call Tucker Carlson when she became chairwoman. She called CNN to do an, a, a, like a Vaseline soaked, gooey profile on her because she's so important because it's all about her, right? And her story. It's all about dunking on all the white men in the Republican party. We are the problem. Remember, it's Ronna McDaniel. Ronna McRomney, who is the enlightened one, the person who's lost every election since she, she lost 2018. She lost huge across the board in 2020. She lost in 2022. She lost in 2021. She lost in 2023. No, but it's, it's Ronna who's enlightened. Because of her gender, you're not allowed to criticize her. Despicable. Despicable. Leftist intersectionality and feminism is what she represented. And you can see that. Light a house on fire. Don't. Okay. But light a house on fire and see where someone runs, the owner of the house. It'll show you what they actually value. Okay. So Rhonda's house was on fire, metaphorically, after that debate. And so where does Rhonda run? You know, you run to your safe, right? You run and you grab your precious valuables that you can't be replaced, right? If your house is on fire, you just grab, you know, obviously your children. So where did Rana run when the house was burning down around her? <laughs> right back to CNN, the real precious in her life. Watch. Personal attacks against you aside, if you look at what Republicans have, uh, have dealt with, over the last few years, Republicans lost the White House in 2020, did not win the Senate back in 2022. The House has a Republican majority, but it's so narrow they can barely govern. And on Tuesday, on the state level, Republicans lost big in Virginia and in Kentucky. Are Republicans right to be frustrated? I understand being frustrated. Of course, we want to win. And I look at the RNC, though, and I'm proud of what we're doing. I mean, we're a turnout machine. We're, we don't do the messaging the candidates do with their pollsters and their campaigns. But I look at our minority outreach that we're doing and the growth we've seen with Hispanic and Asian voters. I look at 2022. Republicans won the popular vote. We turned out four million more voters, and we would have won the Electoral College. The RNC builds the road. All the candidates drive on it. You need a good candidate and a good road to get to your destination. And the things we're doing right now with our Bank Your Vote initiative and with 70 lawsuits that we're in, we just won, in, won one in New Hampshire that upholds voter ID on top of our engagement with minority communities. I'm really proud of what the RNC does. She's really proud. She's lost every election. She, when her house is on fire, runs to MSNBC and CNN to save her house. She runs to her most precious assets, the corporate media that tells you exactly who she is. She didn't run to this show. She didn't run to Charlie Kirk's show. 
She didn't run to Tucker's show. Ladies and gentlemen, the chairwoman of the RNC ran to the corporate leftist Democrat controlled and operated propaganda arms to save her ass. What does that tell you about who she is and who's actually running her? And why it was so, imp this purge, this smoking out of the rat was so important. I believe in my heart of hearts, it was all operational that she wanted to lose. Now, maybe you're screaming at me in the comment section after the last segment. What, what the 2020 election? Shenanigans. Yeah. Where was the RNC to fight them? Where was the RNC suing to stop unlimited, unaccountable mail-in ballots? Where was the, it's literally their job, definitionally, to solve those problems for us, to ensure election integrity. All that money the RNC raised to ensure election integrity across the nation. Uh, where's it gone exactly? Can anybody point to a win? Hmm. Interesting that. Rana wasn't on Fox News because Rana had a um, horrible, horrible time on Laura Ingram's show. Laura Ingram is, you know, whatever. Okay. Like, whatever, you know? Like, not my favorite show. Not my least favorite show. Certainly not like a bomb throw. You know what I mean? Like not like not like a flamethrower kind of show. You know what I mean? Like it's probably a really safe booking. And after Vivek called for a resignation, she goes on Laura Ingram to try and like, you know, weasel her way back into the good graces of the Republican Party. And it is, this is singularly the greatest uh, lit dumpster fire interview. Not just a dumpster fire, okay? So it's a it's a train that's on fire, that's carrying dumpsters, and those good dumpsters are filled uh, with cow manure for cows that have been eating Taco Bell all day. And it's that train just flies into a cliff, off a cliff and into the Grand Canyon. That's the kind of train wreck that this interview was. Check this out. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, if we've done this to Laura Ingram, if Ronna McDaniel has no safe space even on Fox News, how powerful are we? Come on. Watch it. One of the things, they, they, Arana, that happened was, uh, I think in Virginia, people were wondering where the money was, whether they were going to get some help from the RNC. And I, I know it, at one point you said that, that you were not asked for money in Virginia, but a source, a Republican source familiar with the Youngkin team in Virginia told the angle late tonight that that is false. And well, there, just... meaning your story keeps changing. Anyone who thinks Virginia Republicans wouldn't want help when we knew we'd be outspent isn't being serious. You know, Rana, well, they were Laura, outspent by $8 million. This. Glenn Youngkin and, and it did a phenomenal job and he raised a lot of money. A lot of people don't understand fundraising. I can't raise state dollars. I don't get unlimited convention and, yeah. and state dollars. Uh, and these were state House and state Senate races. The RNC is no, a federal it. committee. So, I mean, come on. Can you just, right. this, these are people who come after me all the time. They're on Twitter. They're all the time. And let's see their results. What did they do in Virginia? How much money did they yeah. give? But let me stand by something else. In 2022, Ronna, we, we got, took back yeah. the House. And the RNC is yeah. part Ronna, of that. We we're roll. building the road. And yeah. we're launching Bank Your Vote. We've got to All do right. that. Ronna, we need we people roll, to vote but early. Thank you for. <laughs> so, a member of my production staff used to work with Glenn Youngkin, knows Virginia very, very well. It is, it is losing, losing his damned mind in the comments here in our chat about what a lie that is. Ronna McRomney just didn't want to help in Virginia. There were tons of winnable races. She refused to give a penny to them, probably because of some personal grudge, probably because she couldn't make money off of the money she gives to them, which is how the RNC works. It's like straight up corruption, mafia level corruption. It's literally every single penny that's spent is a kickback scheme to get RNC members rich. We'll see what happens. We'll see who becomes the next RNC chair and let's have a very hard audit of where the money was spent. We don't need a hard audit. Like an, like an, we need like an actual proper independent auditor to come in and do a forensic audit of everywhere that RNC dollars were spent. When you actually open up the books, this is what you see. 
Exclusive analysis shows RNC spent millions on private jets, limos, luxury retreats, and Broadway shows under Romney. Check that out. You can see in the article where the uh, expenditures are. But let's just do some top line here. $1.3 million on private jets. $1.3 million. Not on getting out the vote. Not on door knockers. What could Scott Pressler do with like $300,000 or $300? Scott Pressler works for like free. But $3.1 million on private jets to fly around these snobs who hate you, to sneer at you. They can't even fly in a commercial. Commercial airlines going to go everywhere they need to go. Can't even fly there. $17 million on donor mementos. $1.3 million on limousine and chauffeur services. $1.3 million on limos. $750,000 on floral arrangements. My God. $800,000 on alcohol-related expenditures. Grotesque. Grotesque. Meanwhile, the DNC is spending all of their money, all of, all of their money, on getting out the vote and on election infrastructure. Truly, truly grotesque. I mean, people should people should have to face criminal liability, quite frankly. Uh for the la for like a fiduciary obligation to their donors to not spend the money on private jets. So when you when you donate five bucks out of your hard earned cash to the RNC, um, that's going to Rana's private jet. That's like a a fraction of a second of jet fuel for Rana plus her limousines. DNC, on the other hand, their spending is all buttoned down and tightened up. No luxuries. Pure get out the vote. Pure get out the vote for the DNC. And it's what's finally led to Donald Trump to say, enough, enough. And we have to thank Donald Trump for being the last brick in the wall, the last domino to fall. So all these dominoes fall all the way up, Vivek, RNC, disasters, donors pull out, and then finally the last domino to fall, and it's the big one, the big orange domino, Donald Trump comes down like a wall. The man knows his walls on Rana and has her to Mar-a-Lago and says, yeah, fine. And that happened this week, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have video of that happening, but we do have this. Tougher. You talk about this optimism uh, ahead that, that we could see some relief, but the RNC doesn't seem to be so strong. I mean, the Democrats have all the money. Look at what we see. We've got the Democrats actually uh, with the money and, and uh, spending it. The RNC seeking credit lines. The RNC reported its lowest bank balance at the point in any year in 2016. Comerica says the Michigan GOP defaulted on a loan of half a million dollars. So I have a lot of money. And the money that they get... People are not looking at the RNC. They want they want changes. I, you have to understand. I have nothing to do with the RNC. I don't. I'm separate. How's Ronna McDaniel doing? Uh, I think she did great when she ran Michigan for me. I think she did okay initially in the RNC. I would say right now uh, there'll probably be some changes made. You. There's going to be changes made. This is Donald Trump doing his Donald Trump close to the vest thing, and saying, "Nope, I've already called for the changes, and I've I've made the changes happen." Donald Trump understood how untenable it is. And if, there, if Donald Trump is a master of something, it is a master of reading energy. The man is a true savant at understanding where the country is, reading the energy and where it's at.